Salutations. Welcome to Strategy and Analysis Centre. Today's briefing, Type 075 Amphibious Assault Ships. What capability do they bring to the PLA? The PLA's amphibious assault capability is one of the last areas of the PLA to see significant improvement. Over the past three years, this deficiency has been substantially addressed, most visibly by the introduction of three Type 075 Amphibious Assault Ships. These are very capable vessels, and only the US operates more of this sized capability. This briefing will look at what capability they bring to the PLA and how they might be employed. This is the latest in a series of briefings on the PLA's amphibious capabilities. See below for links to those briefs. The role of the Type 075 is to move troops and vehicles ashore by helicopter and or landing craft with a roughly equal fo focus on air and waterborne assault. The Type 075s are primarily to support the PLA Navy Marines, at least in the initial phase of an operation, as the Ground Force Amphibious Combined Arms Brigades have dedicated landing ships to support its role against Taiwan. Many countries operate amphibious assault ships, often also referred to as LHDs or landing helicopter docks. Their characteristics are a full length flight deck and floodable well dock. The following are some selected platforms. The Mistral class from France, which can operate 14 NH-90 helicopters and four landing craft mediums, LCMs. The Canberra class from Australia, which is essentially the same as the Spanish Juan Carlos and the Turkish Anadolu, which can operate 20 helicopters and four LCMs. The Trieste, a one-off from Italy, which can operate 14 AW101 helicopters and four LCUs. And the Wasp class from the US, which is the world benchmark for this type of vessel, which can operate 24 helicopters and six F-35B aircraft, together with three LCACs. Note the number of helicopters that can be embarked will vary depending on their respective sizes. The 075, in comparison, is significantly larger than the Mistral and Canberra classes, similar to the Trieste, but smaller than the Wasp class. Its amphibious assault capability is provided by 30 helicopters, three LCACs, with each LCAC being able to be replaced by two LCUs, and 35 vehicles. Importantly for the PLA, it provides for the first time a substantial airlift capability from the sea. The full-length flight deck offers a number of benefits. While it does have seven takeoff and landing positions, the six on the port side can simultaneously accommodate Z8 helicopters, the largest and at this stage most numerous helicopter on the vessel. Aircraft storage or preparation aircraft areas are able to accommodate at least another six Z8s. The two aircraft lifts are well positioned, read the flight deck and hangar. The forward lift can accommodate one Z8 helicopter and the aft lift can accommodate two Z8s. This is important as both can lift the largest and currently primary helicopter on the vessel. The lifts connect to a good size hangar, which together with the large flight deck should provide space for around 30 helicopters. A nominal air wing of 30 helicopters might consist of six reconnaissance UAVs, six attack helicopters, and 18 Z8 medium lift helicopters for air assault. In the future, the Z20 transport helicopter will likely replace many of the Z8s for tactical assault. The future air wing might also include the KA-52K, see separate briefing link below which would provide a heavy attack helicopter marinized for operations at sea. After the reconnaissance UAVs and attack helicopters are airborne, the transport helicopters will take off with the initial assault force, possibly three reinforced platoons in six Z8s. Together with light infantry assaulting from small boats, likely deployed by other vessels, the helicopter assault from the Type 075s has the fastest transit time to the landing zone, moving at around 250 kilometers an hour, 
and launched from beyond the horizon. The Z8s can bring ashore all-terrain vehicles, carrying crew serve weapons and additional communications equipment to support the Marine Air Assault Battalion. The next wave is likely to consist of ZBD-05 and ZTD-05 armoured vehicles of the Marines Heavy Battalion. These vehicles have good transit speed, greater than 30 kilometres an hour, which is better than most vehicles in its class. These vehicles present a small target and can fire while amphibious. These vehicles were covered in a separate PLA Marine Corps briefing link below. Another of the ZBD family is a reconnaissance version, which can conduct intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance on transit to the landing zone by way of its UAVs, significantly increasing survivability of the landing force. The Type 075s also carry three Type 726 LCACs, landing craft air cushion. The LCACs have a transit speed of greater than 70 kilometers an hour but are a large target. On the initial assault, they are unlikely to carry large number of troops, but rather critical heavy equipment, such as engineer and breaching vehicles. The LCACs won't bring large numbers of troops ashore until the beachhead is better secured. Recently, a new landing craft utility has been identified. They have good transit speed and can carry around the same size payload by dimension as the Type 726 LCACs, but not as much in weight. In a Type 075, each LCAC can be replaced by two LCUs. Where will the PLA prioritise the employment of this new capability? So far, the 075s have been allocated to the Eastern and Southern Theatre Commands. In a Taiwan scenario for both the main island and the Pengus, the Type 075 will be critical for air assault missions in conjunction with those launched from the mainland, as the ships will provide a different vector for the assault and reduce the transit time to the landing zones. It is also highly likely the 075s would be used against the Pratas Islands, given their greater distance from the Chinese mainland and where the helicopter, landing craft and vehicle amphibious assault capabilities would be useful. In terms of the South China Sea, the 075s might be employed in defensive operations in the Parasol Islands and possibly against Vietnam if required. As for use in the Spratly Islands, they are unlikely to be required given the land size of the islands there, with the possible exception of Taiping Island held by Taiwan. Of course, the Type 075 would not be working alone often likely supported by at least one Type 071 LSD or landing ship dock. Now totaling eight vessels, three of which have been added over the past three years. The 071 and 075 form a useful combination, together utilising LCACs, of which the 071 can carry four, to bring armoured vehicles and heavy equipment ashore. Likewise, the Z8 helicopters off the Type 071s, again which can take four, can cross deck to the Type 075 if that is where the requirement is. In summary, the Type 075 is a well-designed vessel for its role and very capable across the full spectrum of amphibious assault. They bring new capabilities to the PLA, which will take time to mature. With these new developments, the PLA has the second most capable amphibious assault fleet after the US. With three built, how many more are to come? There are some suggestions of eight, but as yet we have not seen any indication of them. Will we see the suggested Type 076 before more of the Type 075 are built? Uh, see the separate briefing on the Type 076 linked below. With three currently in service, that should allow, subject to operational damage, one always available and a second available at longer warning notice and for a shorter period of time. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, Vale de Cero.